Most of Mountain Play 2 Bannerlord's big total conversion mods are still under development and fans need to be patient until some of their most anticipated projects become playable. One mod, however, that still often flies under the radar and is already perfectly playable is Realms Forgotten, an amazing fantasy overhaul that takes us to Aeorth, a world with diverse cultures, wonders and great conflict. The development of this project is super active and the mod is constantly kept up to date with the most current Bannerlord version. There has been substantial progress since my last video about this mod, so I thought it is about time to check back and see what is new in Realms Forgotten. But before we jump into it, a quick word from the sponsor of this video. Warhaven is an upcoming free-to-play medieval fantasy multiplayer brawler that is coming to Steam Early Access on September 20th. The game will feature different action-packed team objective game modes, including 12 vs 12 player as well as 6 vs 6 player battles. Warhaven features a class system with 6 distinct classes, each equipped with unique skill sets, and players can choose from offensive, defensive and support characters to suit their playstyle. A standout feature of the game is the ability for players to transform into an immortal, a formidable unit designed to turn the tide of a battle in their favor. Currently, there are four different Immortals, each excelling in specific situations. In my time during the Warhaven playtests, it became clear that this game is very easy to pick up and offers fast-paced casual fun without the need to practice basic mechanics for a long time. Visually, Warhaven looks great and the game also ran very smooth and stable in the playtests I participated in. So yeah, if this sparks your interest, make sure to wishlist Warhaven on Steam and play for free during Steam Early Access which opens on September 20th at 6 pm Pacific Daylight Time. Realms Forgotten plays about 1000 years ago in Aeorth, a continent drowning in chaos as competing cultures clash for dominance and war is a constant threat amongst every faction. This fantasy universe with its rich lore, the troops, weapons and equipment and the world map are all custom and tailored to fit the setting, which is astonishing considering the small size of the team. There are currently 6 playable factions and various minor and mercenary factions in the mod, whereas Bannerlord's vanilla troops have been almost completely replaced at this point. The Elvians were the original settlers of the continent and the protectors of the first tree. Once spread through the land, now they reside solely in the high forests, which are located at the heart of the map and known as the Elven Realm. The realms of men consist of the northern, southern and western realm. This is now home of people that fled their homelands in the wake of a devastating climate catastrophe that nearly eradicated their entire culture. The Dread Realm, where the mist and shadow prevail, is home to the Dread King. Awakened from their deep slumber in the ice, the Dreadland armies are composed of otherworldly abominations and cursed beings. Aethas, a land that was once thriving, is now a desert wasteland due to the conflicts between sorcerers competing for power and eternal life. The inhabitants of this land include tormented settlers, savage tribes and bizarre creatures. The territory is divided into six city-states, each governed by a powerful sorcerer king. The Alkur draw strength from the earth beneath their feet, forging a connection with the lands that nurture them. Their appearance is a mixture between Iranian and Central Asian. And lastly, there are the Nazorians. After generations, the once nomadic people have evolved their multicultural settlements into a well-organized feudal society with magnificent cities. Visually, their design is a mix between Middle East and Iberia, with a Tolkien fantasy style on top of it. Honestly, the troop assets look fantastic, pretty much all of them, and since the last time I played this mod, they have added tons of new armor pieces. The different cultures are distinct but still fit together well. One of the most recent updates made it so that every faction now has certain troop type strengths, which will reflect in troop compositions. Kingdom of Men have great pikemen and decent infantry. The Alcour have great horse skirmishers and decent infantry. Elvians have great archers and decent cavalry. The Dread Realms have great infantry and good cavalry. Nesoria has great cavalry and decent crossbowmen. And Aethas has great melee skirmishers and decent shock cavalry. Besides that, factions now also have custom culture bonuses that heavily impact gameplay, more so than the Bannerlord vanilla bonuses. Playing as Dread Realm, for example, makes recruiting and upgrading infantry troops 25% cheaper and there is a 15% chance 
to revive 15% of your fallen troops in battle. The recruitment system in Realms Forgotten has also been revamped and players and AI will now have to spend influence points when recruiting troops from a foreign culture. Furthermore, in times of war, recruitment between warring sides is not possible anymore. That should make army compositions more coherent and also give mercenary factions a more central role in the mod. Personally, I really like that there is more incentive to use troops from one culture only. Even in Vanilla Bannerlord, it just feels weird when you end up with an even mixture of five different cultures in your army and just pick the best units from every faction. There are now also legendary troops that you can only get access to if you lead a kingdom and own a castle. Each faction has their own legendary troop and you can only recruit the ones from your own faction. Probably the biggest recent addition to Realms Forgotten is the implementation of magic and necromancy. There is a vendor that sells magic equipment and powerful weapons that give a stat boost and have certain magic effects, like the flame sword for example, that gives plus 200 in two-handed skill and is particularly effective against the dreadland troops. Or the necromancy stones that let you summon troops on the battlefield. There are now also some armor sets that have a moralizing effect on your own troops or a demoralizing effect on enemy troops. I really like all these new additions, especially the idea of a necromancer playstyle. Hopefully they can build further on that and give some room for a magic focus build or playthrough. Like maybe adding a magic character skill that you can level up with some cool perks. Also, it's kind of strange that one random dude in a tavern sells all the super rare and powerful magic items. So they should look into integrating all these new magic features more seamlessly in my opinion. Anyway, another big milestone that this project reached is the addition of the first iteration of a story mode. The story mode will have different chapters that explain the world creation and lore of the mod. At the moment it is quite short, but it looks already promising and I'm curious what they will come up with in the next few chapters. Realms Forgotten has tons of lore and the mod even now has its own homepage where you can read about Aerith and the factions. While Realms Forgotten is already perfectly playable at this point, it is still in beta and as such still not feature finished. There is still quite a lot planned like expanding the story, adding additional gameplay mechanics like beast hunts, adding new races, map extensions and such. But yeah, I highly recommend checking out this mod. As much as I'm looking forward to the Lord of the Rings and Star Wars mods, I really appreciate that someone is creating a new and fresh fantasy universe and brings it to life in Bannerlord. I will leave a link to their Discord where you can find the most up-to-date download link in the video description below. Guys, let me know your thoughts about Realms Forgotten in the comments. If you enjoyed watching, then please leave a like and make sure to subscribe for future medieval slasher content. As always, thank you all for watching and see you soon.